everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and today we're coloring up Hold You Close from Whimsy Stamps. This is from the We Stamps line. Um, I love Whimsy Stamps, all their stamps. So I chose to do this one using my colored pencils. I do switch between using some Prismacolors and some Faber-Castell. It depends on what color I was after, really. Um, I do prefer the hardness of lead of my Faber-Castell over my Polychromos. No. My po favorite Castell Polychromos over my Prisma colors, but they both work wonderfully in the end, so it all depends on your personal preference. Um, this is sped up to five times its original speed, but it's still a super long video, so I hope you guys don't mind just kind of sitting back and grabbing a cup of coffee and hanging out with me. Um, we do, I do two coats of color on 90% of the image. There's a few areas that only get one coat. It depends on how large they are and what look I was after, but... I start using um, my darkest color and I work to lightest when I do things in colored pencil. There we go. I needed my book so I have my list of colors. So for my skin tone, I use dark sepia, Van Dyke brown, bistre, cinnamon, light flesh, and ivory. Wow, I cannot speak. So I start in with that first coat of color that you started saw me do and I just put on a real light coat marking in my shadows and things of that nature and then I go through and I start darkening everything up and reinforcing. The light coat um, first of all means that I'm not burnishing it too fast and second of all I can also change things if I don't like where I put a shadow or if I need to extend a shadow or lighten a shadow. It's very easy to do when I start with a super light coat of color and then um, work my way up in one or two layers depending on the or two la two or three layers depending on the paper I'm currently in this one coloring on craft paper. It's Nina Desert Storm 100, 100 pound or 110 pound cardstock So it's a very smooth paper to start with so it can't take a lot of colored pencil Um, when I work on things like Hanson Me Tans, I don't think I pronounced that correctly or um, Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. I can put three to five layers on before I get a nice smooth blend so it all depends on the paper you're using. I do really like working on um, the Fabriano paper with colored pencils but I haven't found a craft paper in a toothier line that I really like yet so I enjoy coloring on this one on the Nina. So The hair I'm going to use my Prismacolor pencils and I'm using Espresso Dark Brown Light Umber Peach Beige ginger root and white and I think I leave out the peach beige so ignore the peach beige and when I do the second coat I also leave out dark brown but that's okay I used it in the first coat <laughs> so it's just kind of learning what you need and what you don't need and how many colors you need in an area and just kind of having fun and playing with it it's just like Copics you can mix anything together right so her hair is a big adventure she has tons of it and it's all over the place and absolutely beautiful so we're going to work our way through that. And you can see where the lighting changes, where, you know, it's probably either in the evening or early in the morning, because I color before and after work usually. So it all depends on the time of day when I get back to things. This took me, I think, three days I worked on this one. So not straight, just off and on when I had a few minutes here and there. But I'm just mapping in where all of my strokes are going to be for the hair, keeping my pencil nice and sharp. Um, especially with Prismacolor pencils, they dull out really fast. I have to sharpen them, like get my point back on them probably three or four times just doing the hair. So it's, it's definitely to make sure you don't lose that tip or you end up with blunt, really thick lines that you, I don't want in my hair, personally, so kind of all what you like. So now we're going through and darkening everything up. Still working on this. Now I've missed a piece down there with the on the nape of her neck. So I just went back and did that with those two darker colors. Now I'm still going through with that light umber, which is going to make it look more brown instead of black, which is what I was after. So I know these colored pencil videos are a lot longer. They take me a lot more time. Um, at real time speed, this video is an hour and 47 minutes long. 
without the introduction or anything. So it, this is ginger root. So it, um, has to get sped up quite a bit for YouTube. So the nice thing is I obviously it's a slow process. So you do get to see quite a bit of it still, even at this high speed. Cause once I get this in, I go through and do it all over again. Hurrah. Then we get to the fun colors. So I'm going back in with espresso and I'm definitely deepening everything up and making everything a lot more solid on the second coat here. A little bit more pressure than I used on the first one. On these non-toothy papers, you don't need to push very, very hard in order to burnish uh, simply because the paper itself is already so smooth on its own. There are a few points like there where I kind of go out of frame a little bit. It's been a long time since I've recorded a color pencil piece and I did this one just in the last couple of days. So I'm hoping that they'll get better, but I apologize for the odd moments where I'm not quite in frame. I do also advise turning your paper like I do. Um, I know lots of people that try and film, try and film holding their image like straight to the camera all the time. And I can't do that. I've tried and it just doesn't work for me. It's way easier for me to turn the paper to be able to get my flicks and my lines and everything going in the direction I want them to go rather than uh, trying to turn my arm or holding my hand in funny positions in order to get that accomplished. Now I go back in with the light umber. If you guys have any questions about anything with colored pencil, definitely and stamped images, definitely leave them down below. I'll get back to you if I know the answer or it'll come up in an upcoming video. One of the two. Hopefully. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm running out of things to babble about and I got like another 15 minutes to go here. Let's get on to some bright colors. So ginger root. And then I do go through with my white pencil. Um, I don't use my favorite Castell white pencil. They're too transparent. I find that I don't get enough white pigment out of the pencil. So I do either use a Prismacolor pencil or a white luminance. I have a handful of them that I picked up the last time I was in Calgary. So, and this is it. And I like the luminance has is, is a better pencil than the Prismacolor pencil just because it stays sharp longer and it's a harder lead and it doesn't snap off on me as often. But the Prismacolor pencil lays down lots of white and it's fantastic as well. So now I'm going to start on all of my pink and I'm going in with Process Red. These are Prismacolors again. I find that that's where my favorite castells are lacking is in the pinks and the purples. Now on the same note, the pinks and the purples are not light fast. Not nearly as light fast as the other colors in either range. So that's probably why there's less of them in the favorite castell line. But I really like them when I'm coloring stamped images. So I use pinks and purples quite a bit out of my Prismacolors. I'm just going to map in all of our shadows where there's folds or pleats in her dress. Here I'm going to add just a little shadow. It's light. It's just to show that that, that front piece of her dress actually dips a little bit instead of just being flat across. So then we're going to go through with our next color, which I do believe is pink. And just slowly work on blending those out. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my pencil for the first coat. I'm keeping everything really, really light, like I said, so that I have the opportunity to be able to change things if I don't like um, the way it's all headed. Then our next color is blush pink. And it's working the same way as Copics. I'm starting with my darkest and I'm blending everything out to my lightest. And I am going over those previous colors with the lighter color just to build up my layers and my depth and have everything blend together smoothly. So my lightest color here is pink rose. And then I come back and I go in with black cherry. This is a really dark purpley color. I just found that that process red was not giving me enough shadow as I wanted. So I picked out this color, which is a stark contrast and a lot darker, but I'm only using a little bit of it just to give me a bit of shadow and shading a little more prominently through the pink of her dress. And I'm just following everywhere where I mapped those in on the first time. A little bit in that dip there. Then on her sock. Then we'll go back to the process red and we're going to go through all the same colors as we did before and add a little bit of white in at the end. Just working our way through and blending them out. 
I really enjoy coloring on craft paper. The colors look so bright and vivid. It's fun watching it all come to life. It's fun watching it all come to life on any paper, but I really have been enjoying the craft thing lately in case you haven't noticed. If you pop on over to my blog and see that lots of what I've been doing lately has been on craft paper. So just stepping out through our colors the same way as last time, blending everything out, going over our darkest with our li darker colors with our lighter colors in order to get a nice smooth blend. A lot of the principles are the same as with Copic markers. It does take me um, way longer with colored pencils than it does with my markers, but I love the process and I enjoy the look in the end, so it's all worth it to me. And then we're going in with some white luminance. I'd love to get a full set of these. I need to save my pennies. Save my pennies. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add some teal onto her wings here and her belt. So I'm going to start with the Helio Turquoise. I think. It might be Cobalt Turquoise. I start with the first time, but we'll see here. No, it's Helio Turquoise, and then I go in with Cobalt Turquoise. Oh, and I do the bottom of the barrel and the rest of her sleeve in teal as well. And then Cobalt, and I'm just slowly blending everything out. It's the same process over and over again. A nice light coat for my first coat, and then I burnish it out a little bit stronger on my second coat, just to get those colors a lot more bright and vivid. And this one is Cobalt Green. And then our lightest color is light cobalt turquoise. So these are my my favorite Castell polychromos pencils. So I do use them interchangeably and I don't kind of stick to one brand. I probably should for the benefit of people watching and people that wish to color along. But it depends on what colors I want. So I just kind of mix them all together. They both kind of hang up beside me and I'm like, hmm. The best thing I have for my colored pencils is I have um, swatch sheets of every single color pencil I own. Uh, not on the same paper. I have a Faber-Castell one and I have a Prismacolor one so that I can look at both and decide what colors I want as opposed to picking through by the color of the barrel of the pencil. Now, lots of them are very close to the color that the pencil puts out, but it's still easier to see it on my swatch paper as it is as opposed to again trying to pick it out by the color of the barrel or the color of the lead. I have the same thing for my Prisma or for my Copics and for my SIGs and all my coloring mediums I have swatch sheets and they make a giant difference in terms of being able to pick out your colors so it's definitely something I advise doing. It took me a very long time to do it because I didn't think it was worth the effort of sitting down and doing all of that when I first started collecting coloring mediums five or six years ago and then a couple of years ago I decided I really should do this so it took me forever forever in order to make that happen so I'm going to add some white into her now and I'm using a warm gray 3 and a warm gray 2 and then my white and that's simply so that it still gets some shading and it's not just a stark white because everything else has some such depth to it the white needs it as well or it's going to look really out of place I do forget to do the little piece on her neck and I think I do that just off camera afterwards because I had forgotten about it and her sock gets made this color as well this one only gets one coat because I was lazy and decided I could do it with one now I'm going to work on the uh, little drum she's sitting on and I'm going to make all those I'm going to make it orange and yellow so part of it's going to be orange yellow here these are kind of those inside pieces that touch each other at the front corners going sideways and then um, my next is going to be the orange and I'm using my favorite castells for both of these I you on the yellow it was dark naples yellow cadmium yellow light cadmium yellow and zinc yellow now it depends on what set of Prismacolors you have. Zinc Yellow did have a different name. It is number 104 in the pencils. So your pencil might say something different, but it's number 104. And then my orange, I used Light Cadmium Red, um, Dark Cadmium Orange, Orange Glaze, and Cadmium Orange. So those will be um, my orange colored pencils for this one. And then that's done and all we got left is our kitty and the ground and then a little bit of blue in the sky and she'll be done. 
Woohoo! Just finishing that up. I do add a little bit of white just because I found that I got a little too dark on my orange and I didn't add, leave enough room for a brighter highlight so that there's lots of shading. Um, my kitty cat, I do him in the warm grays as well and I use, uh, what do I use? All but the lightest warm grays. So I start at the darkest. So I use warm grays 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. And I just work my way around just like I do with everything else. Now I leave the kitty with just one coat because I want him to kind of look fuzzy and furry. And if I put two coats on him, he's going to look very smooth, like very smoothly blended and almost like plaster-like, like cloth-like, as opposed to being kind of frumpy and hairy. And I wanted him hairy. I don't know if that's a bun. That's a cat or a bunny. I don't know what it is. I think it's a cat. It's a cat, Jesse. That's a cat. My bad. But anyway... <laughs> Make the cat hairy. So it only gets one coat because he looks nice and furry once I do that. So going through and doing that. And then we're going to do our grounding. And for the ground, I used walnut brown, burnt umber, raw umber, and then a little bit of white. And then when we get to the sky, I did the sky initially just using um, cobalt blue greenish phthalo blue and then light phthalo blue and then I went back and I added off camera I worked on it a little bit more because the sky needed a little bit more work and I added in some Prussian blue as my darkest color and blended everything out just a lot further than it was um, through this one here Ooh, ice dropped scared me um, through this version here but it just needed that, like I said, it needed that extra little bit of depth and stuff in order to just finish itself the way I thought it needed to be finished. All in all, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, wish I would have done the background just a little bit different, but it's really, really pretty. You'll see that in the picture on the thumbnail before you come in here because I forgot to take one at the time I'm filming this I still have to do that so or voiceovering this so that still has to get done so you will see it for the thumbnail though and yeah I guess that's pretty much it we're almost done here just gonna finish going around and doing our blue so again if you guys have any questions or anything leave them down below if you're not a subscriber I would love for you to hit that button and a thumbs up really helps me out on the channel more than you could think um, so those are fantastic. I truly appreciate all of you and I hope you guys enjoy my videos. I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.